nature is so beautiful. Look deep into the nature and then you will understand everything better. Sunshine is delicious. Rain is refreshing. Every flower is a soul blossoming in nature. Creatures love the water and some plants love the wood. Rest is not idleness and to lie sometimes on the grass, under trees on a summer days. Listening to the murmur of water or watching clouds float across the sky is by no means a waste of time. Birds and flowers, unique creatures and beautiful trees, earth and wood, aquas and also life, those are very beautiful in nature. The mountain and the sea are the excellent schoolmasters and teach some of us more than we can ever learn from the books. They can fly, they can walk and they beg the food, save the food, they fight, they produce the chemicals to kill the predators, they can catch very beautifully and they lead their life with a specific way. That everything is studied under the green plants and cordoids. multicellular algae they are aquatic in nature they are the major producer of earth's oxygen there are many examples like a chlamydomonas olvax elothrix etc there are three types of algae red algae brown algae and green algae some use complex forms of algae found in the ocean are commonly called kelps. Example, microcystis. Green algae containing the pigment called chlorophyll is responsible for the green color and also photosynthesis. Some algae are in the shape of thread or filamentous. Example, yellow threads. Some others are microscopic like Chlorella and Chlamydomonas. Some common examples for green algae are Eulothrix and Spirogyra. Another type of algae is red algae is also nothing but rhodophysiae. They contain a pigment called phycoerythrin. It is responsible for the red color. Examples polysiphonia and batrachospermum. Some algae contain a pigment called xanthophyll which is responsible for the brown color or it may be a lowish color they grows attached with the rock and weeds algae reproduce by vegetative asexual and sexual method vegetative means each bit of thallus will separate it from the parental body and grows an individual plant. The flat plant body of the multicellular algae is called thallus. It breaks up into many pieces and all those pieces 
is developed as a new individual plant. The another non-vascular plant is bryophyte. Usually, these are commonly called amphibians of the plant kingdom because they need water to complete their life cycle. They have unicellular root-like extension are called rhizoids. Bryophytes include two groups of plants namely liver oats and mosses. Mosses grow vertical to the soil surfaces and they form the dense mat over the soil surface and they check the soil erosion. Bryophytes include two successive generations are called gametophyte and sporophyte. Bryophytes have alternative life cycle. They are haploid gametophyte and diploid sporophyte. Diploid sporophyte is non-chlorophyll and they depends on gametophyte for their food and shelter. The sporophyte by meiosis produces haploid spores. These spores on germination gives rise to a haploid gametophyte. As you know, the gametophyte is the adult plant body. They contain two distinctive structure called antheridia and archegonia. Antheridia produces male gametes. Those male gametes fuse with the female gametes which are present in archegonia. The zygote resulting from sexual reproduction develops into a diploid sporophyte. The first terrestrial plants which develops the vascular tissues are called pteridophytes. Pteridophytes, gymnosperms and angiosperms they included under the tracheophyta because they have xylem and phloem. Nephrolepis, Selaginella, Adiantum, Lycopodium, Marsilia are the common examples for pteridophytes. They are also commonly known as ferns because they grow in moist soil, cool and shady places. Remember, in bryophyte, gametophyte is the adult plant body because that is large. But when you come to the pteridophyte, gametophyte is small and independent structure is called prothallus. This prothallus containing two distinctive structure called archegonia and antheridia. They produce female and male gametes respectively. Here also like a bryophyte have a two successive generation commonly called sporophyte and gametophyte. Another vascular plant is gymnosperm. Usually, gymnosperms are nothing but naked seeded plants. Here, the seeds are not covered by a capsule or fruit cover. They are the largest, oldest, tallest tree in the world. Here you are watching some trees which are comes under the gymnosperms are called Sequoia gigantea. Gymnosperms have 
multicellular prominent reproductive structure are called cones. Cones are of two types. One is male cone, another one is female cone. Male cones contain numerous microsporophylls. They produce microspores and they have male gametes. Female cones contain megasporophylls which produce ovules containing female gametes. The higher classification of the plant kingdom is angiosperm are also commonly known as flowering plants. Here the seeds are covered by a capsule commonly called fruit. In angiosperms, flowers are the reproductive structure of the plant body. Flowers may be a single or in a cluster. A special branch which bears a cluster of flower is commonly called inflorescence. On the basis of seed cotyledons, angiosperms can be classified into two types. One is monocotyledonous and another one is dicotyledonous. Here are some differences between monocot and dicot plants. Just go through this.